achieve what you want to see. It's Pink TV. It's a one of a kind show. Don't let anybody tell you now. Cause if you really want to do it, just put your mind to it. With a little bit of faith, you can go along. Thank you so much for tuning in yet again to another episode of Pink TV. Help me welcome Tanya Poe. How are you doing, Tanya? I am awesome. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> Tanya Poe is Regional Vice President of Primerica, a financial services company. Yes. So, to be honest, uh -huh. okay, I'm just going to be real. Okay. We don't hear many young girls from Compton, California. Uh-huh being a regional vice president of a financial company. Okay. Okay. That's true. <laughs> so I just want to kind of go to your beginnings. Okay. In Compton. Okay. How was it like, or what was it like growing up in Compton for you? Um, exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never a dull moment. Okay. Um, but uh, I was fortunate enough to be um, in a two-parent home where um, they always gave me, you know, values and said, you know, just because you are from Compton does not mean you have to act Compton if that's a way to act um, every time you leave the house and everyone doesn't have to know that yeah. so they taught me uh, a lot of different things about um, channeling you know where you want to be and, and placing your energy to get you where you want to be and what you want to do it doesn't matter where you're from it matters mm -hmm. what you do with information that you've been given mm -hmm. um, anybody can learn no matter where they're from so they taught me those things and I did things out of the ordinary like horseback riding and dirt mm -hmm. bike riding and uh, we traveled a lot um, so he tried to give me my father gave me a lot of uh, experiences that weren't typical Compton so that I could have a different way of thinking and looking at things so that's yeah. pretty much where, where that that came from and your father I noticed that you speak very highly of him yes um, how much of a role model did he play in your in your life growing up? Well, he taught me um, my work ethic. Um, he taught me that anything worth having is worth working for. Um, anything they give you for free um, is usually not worth anything. Um, <laughs> and he taught me one thing that I really that really has really really helped me that he who has the goal makes the rule. So um, mm. if you find someone that has the life that you want. Um, and they're willing to share with you the things that they've done to get there, then you, you go ahead and you follow that so that you can get there too. And so um, those things really, really stuck with me mm -hmm. to help me. And uh, he's just been, um, and my mom as well, but my dad truly was um, the leader of our household and would um, make it very, very adamant about you're going to college, you're doing this, you're doing that. It wasn't even an option in my house, you know, wow. from growing up. You're going to college. Mm -hmm. That's just, there's nothing else to talk about. And I thank him for that. You know, I wasn't too happy about it back then. <laughs> but, you know, I, uh, I thank him for that. Yeah. About being the way that he was with me and um, my little sister as well. Nice. So, I know you went to college. Yes. I mean, you just, you know, yes. your dad was like, you're going. Right. So when you did get to college, what was your main focus? Was it finance? <laughs> this is so funny. Um, I originally wanted to be like Oprah Winfrey. I wanted to have a talk show, right? <laughs> hey, uh, Oprah. That's right. <laughs> right. We give you a shout out, Oprah. Um, and I wanted to be a broadcast journalist um, and all through high school I was um, the editor-in-chief of my uh, newspaper and uh, also the editor-in-chief of the yearbook staff. I would walk around, I was that kid at school that would walk around, very very popular, not, not a, a nerd. I can see that. Okay. But <laughs> I was, I didn't care what anybody thought about me. Yeah. And so I was the person with the microphone that went and got footage for my school and tried to have, you know, film. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to Columbia School of Broadcasting, which was well other side of the country but I'm a California girl so um, that, <laughs> the weather change was like whoa it's too cold over there <laughs> so then I said okay I'll go to USC and um, I actually got in USC but my parents weren't educated on financial matters on how to put money away for mm -hmm. me to be able to do it so um, I didn't go I went to Long Beach State instead okay. um, and when I got to Long Beach State I realized that their journalism department was not what I wanted it to be so I just kind of got rid of the idea and switched to criminal justice, law enforcement, okay. as a, the two are totally unrelated, <laughs> but um, I switched to that and I decided to go that route and then graduated and 
got a master's degree in education because I started subbing as a substitute teacher just to make ends meet. And then they yeah. liked me and talked me into, we'll pay for you, we'll help pay for you to get a master's degree in education. Okay. Yeah. Ended Free up doing school. it 10 years as a high school teacher for 10 years. And then I went to probation for two. Then I found financial services. Never, I didn't, I didn't like math. <laughs> I didn't like, no, I'm so serious. But you know what? Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't afraid of, some, of the unknown. And this is what I did know, that I, I wanted to be successful. So if success meant I need to learn something different and do something different, then that's what I'm, I'm going to do. I just knew that, you know, the, the, the jobs that I had would only get me to a certain level in life. And I wanted more you wanted than more. what they could offer me. So I had to let it go. Okay. Yeah. So would you say that decision to let it go, was that a turning point for you? Who that decision was a hard one to make. Um, I started in, in the financial service business, business part-time, um, and it was just to make some extra income. Um, but when the extra income became, uh, on the days that I did uh, uh, work with financial services, when it became just as much money as my full-time job as a probation officer, I'm like, wait a minute, why am I doing this part-time and I'm making just as much money as I am with my full-time? Mm -hmm. If I let this go, I could double, triple, quadruple this over here. And so um, wow. I took a leap of faith, and after a year of being part-time, I walked away from a county job that everybody would kill to have. Well, most people would kill to have. You with know all these people love those benefits. Uh, the, I was, you <laughs> took the word right out of my mouth. <laughs> benefits and, and um, the fact and security. Mm. Those two things, and they feel like, you know, when you work for the county, you got to kill somebody to get fired. So <laughs> they just felt like, well, how would you leave that good county job? Well, see, good means different things to different people. Mm. It's all in who is saying it and how they look at it. Good to one may not be good to me. That might be so-so to me. I look at good as having options. Mm. And that job could not provide enough options for me and my family. So I had to let it go and be in more control where I write my own ticket. I have no boss. I do what I want, when I want, and how I want. And it's priceless. And it pays well, too. <laughs> <laughs> not to mention that part. Not to mention that. That's important, right? Uh, yes. Right. Okay. So... You started part-time, mm -hmm. quit your full-time job. Yes. Started working for yourself. Yes, full What are the time. benefits? I mean, well, what are the pros and cons of having the, that security of a job and then working for yourself? Well, this is the thing. I had to recondition my mind because we, we most people, were raised to believe that um, you had to have a job, which means you have to have a boss, which means you have to have someone handing you a paycheck for your services. Most people didn't realize that you're not paid for the job you do. You're paid for the time you spend there. And, 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 the, and the reason why that's true is because everybody's working a job where the pay is the same, but you worked harder that day than the other person. They ran around hiding all day. They worked three hours of the eight-hour day. They may have, you know, went to the bathroom 50 times. They, <laughs> they played online instead of doing their work. Right. But why was the paycheck the same and you guys worked the, the same hours you were there? So they weren't paid for the amount and the kind of work they did. You're paid for the hours you spend at a job. Mm. And so I said, I need to be somewhere where if I put in extra work, I get paid extra for what I do. And that way, sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. There's no limitations when you work for yourself. Those benefits that everybody are talking about, one of my business mentors, he's a, a millionaire. And one thing he told me when I did mention benefits to him as we had a conversation about going full time, this is what he said to me I'll never forget. He said, Tanya, um, if I could teach you how to make 20 grand a month, you think you could pay your own benefits? I said, I think I can manage. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure I could. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So the first day that happened, he called me and said, how's it feel to make 20 grand a month? I said, um, I don't know, because it's only 19400 So he hung up and he called me back the next day because we get paid every day. Mm -hmm. He called me back the next day and he said, okay, now that, how does it feel to make 20 grand a month? I mm -hmm. said, it's awesome. <laughs> and you just don't, you stop worrying about the normal things anymore because your life's no longer normal. Mm. And that's what I want to work for. I didn't want to be normal. I didn't want to be average and ordinary because then my child's going to be average and ordinary. I need to be extraordinary because I can't create anything but an extraordinary child if I'm extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So I just want to start a different lineage to pass down in my family. My parents did what they knew how to do, and they did the best they could with the information they were given. 
Right. If they were given this information that I was given, they would have processed it different and it would have been a different, they would have been the ones to change it. Mm -hmm. But since they weren't, I am. Mm -hmm. Anyone that comes behind me, my daughter's never going to have a job. And I'm excited about that. She's going to want to work for herself. She's going to want to work for herself. And if she does have a job, she's going to have it with a different goal. She'll have it with the goal, and let me learn everything I can. And her goal every day when she goes to work is not going to be survival. Her goal every day when she goes to work is going to be learning and figuring out how can I turn this information that I've learned into my own, my own project, mm -hmm. into my own. And so you go to work different. And that's what I try to teach my team. I have people on my team that are full-time. Yeah. and have people on my team that are, that are part-time. And I try to teach them, I say, I don't want you to not have a job. You need it right now until you master this. I said, but I, what I want you to do, I want you to go to work different. I want you to go to work understanding what your worth is. And that this may not, you don't have to work at this job for the rest of your life. Mm. You're going to work there until you learn what it is you need to know to start your own because somebody has to be the boss. Why well, can't be you, but be you? Right. Right. I think that's an incredible thing. I mean, of course, you're a boss. Mm -hmm. But I think it's great when bosses actually encourage their workers to want to grow. Right, and, right. And, and be all that they can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know when you are in a business like finance and when you're, you know, working at the top. Right. Um, there are principles that you should, should yes. live by. Yes, yes. Um, so what are, I would say, maybe your top two okay. principles. Well, my, the way I, is God, family, and business to me. Okay. And when I get to the business part of it, I use the word boss because that's what people relate to because of jobs. But when they come into our world, um, I'm their business mentor mm. because technically they do what they want when they want, when they want. I don't, I don't give them a schedule or do anything. They just tell me what their goals are for the month and then I help them to achieve those goals. So when I'm on them and coaching them about how to get to where you told me you want to be by the end of the month, mm -hmm. it's because this is what you told me. I didn't tell you you had to do that. Mm -hmm. You told me this is what you wanted. You told me you want to make five grand this month. You told me that you want to do this. You know you have the contract where you can, so let me show you what you need to do. Let me show you what has to get done in this next week in order to achieve that. Yes. So I'm coaching them through um, what they need to do to get to achieve the goal that they set for themselves. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in, in, in this business, I teach God, family, business. With those three things, you really can't go wrong. You need that. And see, a lot of um, uh, corporate America, if you will, they'll have uh, Christmas parties and you can't invite your spouse. Or they'll have a retreat, but you can't invite your spouse. Right. And, and, and a lot of that is because they, they don't encourage um, family. They encourage that you have to let that go so that you can get to a certain spot and you can go back to that later. Mm -hmm. But then you miss so much. And so in, in, in my business, and the reason why I encourage people to win is because the way our structure is set up, my goal is to get you, is to have you become, I have two regional vice presidents right now. They both make over $100,000 a year. Neither one of them have been here, been, in my, been with me more than four years. I've been with my company for seven. Okay. And so I encourage them and I, because if I promote one more, I become a senior vice president. I will always and forever make money off the production they do. So it's not like somebody came in, I taught them everything I know, and then they ran off and they went and started their own business and into the sunset they go and I don't even make a dime off of them. No, I'm going to always encourage you because there's a financial interest in everything that you do because I will forever no matter where they go on the planet if they are making a dime from this business I will forever override them and so that is the uniqueness of me truly wanting you to win the more you win the more I win that's the that, and that's the difference between our company and a lot of other companies is that you know you can come in and you can say I'm, I'm going to do something great and you're going to help me I will help you forever because every time you make a dollar profit I do too Everybody wins. Everybody wins. What a, an incredible business model. Yes, yes. And it's unique. It's different. Wow. Right. So, Tanya. Yes. You have this wealth of knowledge. Okay. You've acquired it. You know, you, you're, you're doing well for yourself. What is some advice that you can give mm -hmm. to that little girl in Compton right now? Yes who may not have had that strong family background, right? but wants more yes. than her current circumstances. Yes. What advice can you give her? Um, I look at it like this, because I used to be a group home supervisor too when I was a teacher. So I would you know, uh, counsel girls, and this is what I would always say. 
your situation where you come from, can you can use it as an example or the warning. Mm -hmm. So if it's a very bad environment and you know you want more, you use it as the warning. I can't do any of that because I'm going to end up like that if I do. If it's a great situation you come from, there's the example right there. I have to do what they've done and better so I can have better. Mm -hmm. So it's a choice. Everyone has to make an individual choice. It really doesn't matter where you come from. You, you go to bed at night, you lay down with, even if you have a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you lay down at night with you and God. You and God have a conversation. It has nothing to do with who's, who you laying next to. Mm -hmm. So you make your promises to him and then you go do the work. I pray the same prayer every night. God, just wake me up in the morning. Because I know there's a lot of people asking for a lot of stuff, and that's the part they don't get. They ask for stuff instead of the ability to go get the stuff they want. I ask for the ability. Wake me up every morning, God, and I promise you I will do the rest. I keep my list real short with him. <laughs> I think short. that's a smart thing to real do. Real short. Yeah. I don't need, I just, can, we just, can we just do that? And I promise you I'll do the work. Just let my feet hit the ground every morning, and I'll, I'll make you proud every day before I go to bed. And so I, I, I try to instill these things. When I was a school teacher and I taught high school, yes. I taught in the inner city of Los Angeles, all the children that were kicked out of major high schools in L.A. So these kids were kind of like continuation, forgotten about, oh, they're not going to do this, they're not going to do that. And one thing that I prided myself on is the conversations I would have with them. I taught history. And so I used to talk about the, the thing, where we come from, Mm -hmm. And where we are today, the opportunity that we have to advance today is not the same as it was, you know, 50 years ago. It was, it's not the same, but you're Very on true. an equal playing uh, field right now. So if you don't win, it's, it's, it's not because of your mama. It's not because of your daddy. If you don't win, if you don't win, if you don't win, it's because of you. You made that choice. You did. Not your parents. They've made their choice. You've chosen to go down their path or you can choose to go down another one. Totally up to you. I don't care how old you are. Choices are made at a very young age. I'm teaching my daughter that right now at nine years old. You have to make the right choices all the time or you will end up somewhere that you don't want to be. But really, did you not want to be there? Because if you made a choice to be there, then you really did want to be there. You just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Right. Those conscious choices, too. Exactly. Ooh, exactly. I got chills. <laughs> so I just want to thank you. You're so welcome. For sharing that knowledge with us. Um, I did have one more question. Okay. One more. Okay. One more. So um, to that person who believes that the nine to five is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, ideal, mm -hmm. what is something that they can do right now to break that mindset? Well, this is the thing. I encourage everyone to dream because it's, it, the nine to five is ideal to the person that doesn't want more. Mm -hmm. I've realized and through the success books that I've read, through the um, seminars that I've attended, through all the coaching I've gotten from leaders in my business, I've realized that there are two kinds of people. Okay, There's a rhino and there's a cow. The cow is, well, you know, there's no gates. If you ever travel and you drive on the road and you see cows out there, you know there, there's no gates for a cow. Mm. You know there's no gates for a cow because if you feed that cow and treat that cow halfway decent, they're not going anywhere. You don't need a gate for a cow. Okay, subconsciously, that's all they need is some food and they will be loyal to you. Okay? okay. The okay. rhino is another story. It's the hardest animal to penetrate in the jungle. Now, even the lion has to jump up and grab the neck in order to get penetrate because they have a, a coat of armor built on them. Mm -hmm. And you cannot stop it, when it once it goes. It's so fast and so heavy. When it gets its mind fixated on something, it's going right over there to get it and you can't stop it. Nobody can. So the rhino and the cow. So I realized that there's some people are just cows. No disrespect, but mm -hmm. they are comfortable with receiving a paycheck because they cannot, they don't, have that thing in them. But then there's people that are, that are cows, that, but they, they don't realize that they're really rhinos. So they're wondering, why do I go to work feeling a certain way? Why do I have these thoughts? Why do I, I'm so unsettled? Why do I just don't want to be here? Why does having a boss bother me? Because they're really rhinos. 
Wow. And for, so for that person, I tell you that you need to explore your options. Get into something that you, that you love or you're passionate about or if success is what you want, always keep your, your, your mind open for something else or something different. Just because what, this is what you're doing right now does not mean it's what you was meant to, meant to do, especially if it's not fulfilling for you. And you mm -hmm. always got to find out what someone's dreams and goals are. Mm -hmm. Like what, is, what are some of the dreams and goals you have? Do you want to go to Fiji one day? Do you want to have, uh, you know, have your children be able to go to whatever college they want to? As long as they get the A's and B's, then you can pay, write a check for wherever they want to go. What are your goals and dreams? Do you want a house on the hill? Do you want a Ferrari? And it's okay to want those things, okay? Mm -hmm. And if that's what you want, then you ask the question, is what you're doing right now, currently right now, going to ever get it for you? And then when they say no, say, okay, well, which do you want more? You want to be comfortable or do you want to go for those goals and dreams? Because if it's the goals and dreams and you know you can't get it with what you're doing, why are you still here? Why aren't you working for something else? So once you can tap into what somebody wants, it's really all about what they want in life. Mm -hmm. And if, if they want more, then you just find a connection and show them how what you're doing right now is never going to give it to you. So are you okay with leaving this earth and never getting any of what you wanted? And if That's a good okay, question to ask yourself. If they're okay with that, then they're a cow. It's fine. But if they're not, <laughs> they're a rhino and they need to look me up because I can help them with that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, if someone did want to look you up to find out more of how they can become a rhino instead of a cow, how would they be able to do that? Well, they can go to my Facebook page, uh, Tanya Poe. They can go inbox me. Um, they can go to my Instagram page, um, which is Tan Poe, T-O-N-P-O-E, um, Tan Poe uh, 73. Um, and they can send me a direct message um, or they can email me at um, L-I-V-N number four TP at AOL.com. Live in four TP at AOL.com. So any of those three ways they can send me messages and we can have some dialogue and a conversation and then we can see how serious they are about, you know, doing something different. There you have it. You have no more excuses. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tanya, for coming out today. You're so welcome. I and uh, I, I seriously hope that you guys got something from this. I definitely did. Um, man, I'm blown away. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next week on PTV. To learn more about self-employment opportunities, contact Tanya Poe through Facebook, Instagram, or email. To learn more about Pink TV, visit our website, Instagram, and Twitter pages, and Facebook page. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.